Hey, what's up, nieces and nephews? Welcome back to the Uncle Bo Gator channel. Uh, we're trying a couple different things today. Uh, one, I got this new uh, little furry beast right here. It's like a little uh, Girl Scout Thin Mint or a weird little black nipple on the outside of my shirt. Uh, but we're trying to fix some things with audio when I do some work out in the garage. And uh, I think this is gonna be the solution that I'm going with. We're gonna really put it through the ringer today. But what are we doing in the video? Well, we're gonna start with, um, if you guys remember in July, I got uh, White Walls put on the uh, put on the old Road King. And I mentioned in that video, that was July, that was seven months ago. And I'm really surprised at how well they still look, given that it's been seven months. I got a little secret from one of the guys that worked at the Harley shop back then on how to keep these things clean. I've decided I'm gonna put this video out whether this stuff works or not. That way we can either confirm that it works or dispel the mist either way. So without further ado, let's get to it. Let's clean these things up. What do you say? All right, so this fella at, uh, at Burt's, his name is Kanio. He had a heritage with absolutely beautiful, beautiful white walls. And uh, he said, just use this LA Totally Awesome stuff on here. Uh, since then, I've done some research on it. It is a degreaser. Um, so assuming this is uh, stuff it can take off, then uh, should work just fine. Let's check it out. I don't like squatting down. Too fat and heavy for all that. I'm gonna wash the bike after we get done with these. I'm just gonna take this and uh, spray it on by itself. The reason I'm gonna wash after this instead of during or before is that I have done some research on this stuff. Uh, some of you guys have figured it out that I started a pressure washing business. It hasn't really been moving all that well lately, but degreaser is something that's used in a variety of applications. You really don't want to get this stuff on paint, at least on a house or on gutters. So uh, just to make sure I minimize any risk to the paint on the motorcycle, uh, we're gonna wash after the fact. So I'm gonna spray this on this side. We'll come around to the other, do the same thing. I'm really not looking forward to doing the rear because I don't have any sort of uh, motorcycle stand or jack that I think would work out well enough for this. So it's gonna require me making little micro adjustments to the position of the motorcycle. There's also a lot of times uh, using this where it's got a dilution ratio on the back and uh, there's too many. There's too many dilution ratios. There's somebody out there online suggested a five to one ratio, uh, but we're gonna roll the dice and do it just straight up out of the bottle and see if that works. I can see a lot of the discoloration coming off of here. What I'm gonna do is let it sit for a couple minutes and then we're gonna take this brush. I don't have a, a, a tire scrubbing brush, but I bought this Mr. Clean heavy duty scrub brush. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can see where it was <laughs> yellow and now it's, uh, it's white underneath there. I don't have my hose hooked up at the moment because a little nozzle broke. Yeah, I could have gone to get a new one, but I haven't yet, so just bear with me. We'll figure this out. Yeah, this is gonna be nice, man. Well, I can already tell you this stuff is gonna, gonna work out okay. Uh, obviously, the rear is gonna be a little dirtier. It does make me wonder though, with this just being a degreaser and not a uh, not a white wall cleaner, like is this a good way to clean the tires, like from brake dust and all that? You know what I mean? What do you say we get the uh, get the hose around here and spray this off, see what it looks like after a spray? So like I mentioned, my little nozzle broke, but as luck would have it, as I was around that side, I found one connected to an old water hose that probably belongs to the property owner. We'll put that on to try to control the water flow a little bit. Okay, I haven't used one of these kind in a long time. Oh, yeah. Would you look that? Is that not amazing? Holy smokes. Holy smokes, boys and girls. Man, the difference. You know, you think you have white walls this whole time and you really have yellow walls over time. I think that's gonna, that's gonna work out just fine. I think we can all agree that, that is a very significant difference. I'm very, very happy with this. So uh, uh, we're gonna get up, get the other side. I'm gonna show you guys the before and after of the rear as well. And maybe my little process. It's gonna be a pain in the ass scooting that thing back and forth, but we'll get her done. You stupid whore is what I meant to say. But instead, all that came out of my Stupid face was 
why don't you love me and why'd you leave me and darling I swear I'll change so tell me you love me and tell me you won't fade away you stupid bitch is what I meant to say out loud but instead all that came out of my stupid fucking mouth was why don't you love me and why'd you leave me and darling I swear I'll change now tell me you love me and tell me you won't fade oh tell me you love me and tell me you won't fade tell me you love me and tell me you won't fade away all right boys so uh we're in a little bit of a pickle so first of all look at that will you look at that Oh my God, that is night and day difference. This side was a little tougher. I did have to back it up three times uh, to get all the little spots. And there are a couple places where I could have done a better job, but uh, we're not gonna worry about that. So the plan here was to uh, get these white walls clean, mission accomplished, and then wash the bike and be done with it. Bike week's coming up next week. Not that I'm trying to look like anything special out there. Just another road king on the road. Hey, it's my road king though. Uh, but your old uncle failed to look at the weather a little bit more closely before I came out here. And uh, yeah, we got that coming in. Shouldn't be surprised, it's Florida, and that's the way that this, quote, winter <laughs> has been for us. Hey, but let's take it to look at the old uh, weather app and see what happens. Uh, I think we can risk it. What do you guys think? I mean, we're going to find out when this video comes out if I risk it or not, but... Oh shit, what is that? What is that nastiness? Yeah, I think we're gonna go for it. Let's do it. I might regret my decision, but wouldn't be the first time. Okay, well, uh, normally I wouldn't record washing the bikes unless it's a feature, but we're gonna do it today. One thing I do like about uh, the clouds coming in is that uh, I don't have to worry about the sun drying this up super early <laughs> while I'm trying to work, you know what I mean? This is, I don't do a detailed job when I wash. I just kind of wash it. You know, I, I, I get all the obvious shit out of the way. I'm not reaching up in there with chrome polish and all that garbage. People complain about that shit. I've never had to complain about it because I don't do it. So many guys are, I mean, we mentioned it before on the channel. So many guys are like, I'd rather ride more than wash it. Well, that's how you get corrosion, my friends. In the Marine Corps, we learned that the first step to corrosion control is cleanliness. Uh, a lot of you guys have wondered. A lot of you guys have asked. Well, not a lot, but some have asked. Hey, uh, what are you doing for work over there now? Now that you sold everything, paid off all your debts, and moved over to the East Coast. Well, short answer is nothing. Not doing anything. Now, I'm starting. We still got money in the bank, uh, but I'm starting to feel the pinch. You know, you got household expenses, even if all of our, our shit's paid off, still got household expenses. And that starts eating away a little bit. Um, I did start a business. A couple of you guys have figured that out. My trailer's in there full of pressure washing stuff. I'm gonna tell you though, after a few months of spending money putting that trailer together, taking my trainings and shit, it's kinda, it's kinda losing its uh, appeal. Maybe you can understand. I don't know. You might say, well, Mike, you haven't been in business for you long. You don't have any customers yet. Why are you quitting so early? I'm not quitting. You know, I got no money coming in for myself, really. T-shirt sales helped a little bit. Now, if you guys are curious, the breakdown of the cost of that. I paid a grand for those shirts. 60 shirts. I paid a grand for 60 shirts. Uh, I gave one. I kept one for myself. Gave one to my wife, my daughter my mom uh, and shade tree and he's he's helped me out on the channel a lot so why not right the art was uh 250 dollars for that you know so we're in we're in what 1250 something like that here i'll get this first so what did i sell 55 of them you guys can do the math 55 times 35 basically i didn't, I didn't make a whole lot you know and then uh you guys might have noticed on this go around, you know, the stickers I never charge any tax for or shipping for, but I had to pay for it anyway, which, I mean, whatever, it's a wash. But on the shirts, I really couldn't afford to because the shipping, 
I messed up on the shipping. I should have been charging for uh, ground advantage, the guy's post office told me. But I was paying for first class mail, or you guys were paying for first class mail, so the difference was about 50%, so I had to foot that. Once I figured it out, I changed the shipping, but I don't know, I, I'd say all in all, you know, take out all the costs and shit, and things I had to pass on, whatever. I probably made about 700 bucks off of 55 shirts. But you might say, hey, Mike, you made money off of it. Yeah, I, I, I'm thankful, but I felt like it was more than $700 worth of work to get those promoted and get them out there. And I appreciate everyone who bought them. I really do. I know it's easy for somebody with a hell of a lot more subscribers to me to sling some shirts because everybody knows who the fuck they are. And uh, I'm not big, man. 15,000 subs, almost 16,000. That's not big. Bigger than it was. But we got more shirts in the works. We got some more things coming that I'm really excited about. Um, I kind of latched on to an idea last year, about this time last year, when I learned that a group of alligators is called a congregation. Man, that opened up. My mind is wide open now on uh, playing on that whole congregation slash priest theme or whatever, you know. So we're rolling with that. So yeah, what am I doing for money? <laughs> nothing I, I i am taking a temp job i want to talk about this in another video i think but i sent a letter to every dealership around not just harley dealership i sent it to the honda shop to the metric shop that's everything but honda um i got callbacks almost immediately even the harley shops you know i put in my little letter to them that hey i really want to work around motorcycles still but i don't want to sell them you know a couple guys called and they're like well, everything is sales and I'm like, internally, I'm like, no shit. But there's a difference between, I don't know, there's a difference between like upselling a part to somebody whew, or a service package than it is like, you know, everybody coming in the door and greeting and maybe going on a demo ride, maybe not. And then sitting down doing the finance talks and all that. I don't, I don't get a thrill out of that, man. I don't get a thrill out of it. So two of them, sorry, three of them, one of the Harley shops and two of the metric shops. One of the metric shops actually, you know, they, I sit down and had an interview and the guy was ready to hire me on the spot. You know, my resume looks like I'm way overqualified for these jobs and I'm aware of that. So I tried to address that in the email by saying like, hey, I know my resume looks like I'm on this career trajectory, but you know, I kind of explained that my wife and I sold everything. We don't have any debts. We're just kind of slow down a little bit. And uh, the one metro shop was ready to go, man. He told me, you know, let me let me get with the owner and figure out how much we want to pay you. Can you pass a drug test? Of course, I can pass a drug test. One way or the other, right? And uh, you know, even later that afternoon, he texted me. He said, "Hey," or sent me a voicemail. Hey, I haven't got a hold of the owner yet, but I'll call you first thing tomorrow. You know, I can, I'm trying to get your top dollar. Then the guy ghosted me, just completely ghosted me. Like, I'm not begging you for a job. I want, I wouldn't mind doing what you, you know, what you're at. That was a, that was a driver job actually, which is what I said I wouldn't mind doing. You know, parts counter, driver, you know, whatever, something little like that, something with a little bit of income. I'm not trying to get rich, but uh, yeah, ghosted me. The other guy was at the Honda shop. And uh, he said, hey, we're looking for a porter. I'm like, eh, I'm thinking, I don't know if I have the stamina for that. But it's, he said, you know, getting, you know, being a driver, getting bikes out of the warehouse, doing PDI, which if you guys don't know what PDI is, it's when you get a new bike from the manufacturer and uh, put it all together, you know, put handlebars on, change out the oil and shit to something that people can actually ride on, hook up some wires, put fuses in shit like that. I'm like, you dude, that's right up my alley. You know, he's like, do you have tools? I'm like, I got tools to do that. And if not, I know where to buy them. Never heard back from that guy. And then one of the Harley shops, the guy reached out to me. He saw I'm a veteran. He saw I had some warehouse experience managing. He saw I had some inventory management experience over at Burt's. He said, hey, our parts manager's leaving in a month. Your resume came in at a good time. He's like, I think all these things work in your favor. I'd love to sit you down, me, you, and the GM, and talk about, you know, looking at parts manager. Hell yeah, let's go. 
nothing. I even rode up there to that dealership and uh, physically handed my resume over to the, uh, there's two GMs apparently. I asked her, told her kind of the conversation I had with the service manager and she was in the middle of a deal. I said, hey, I want to take up any of your time. Here's my resume. I'd love to talk to you more. No call. I don't know, man. I had an interview with uh, another power sports dealer about doing some marketing coordinating, but man, the lady, the lady that interviewed me, God, as soon as she got on there, man, she just went right in stone cold question asking. And I'm like, that's not, I don't like that vibe at all. Which you're supposed to do an interview, right? But I like conversations in an interview. I don't like just getting right down in there and start asking the hard questions right away. Let's talk, let's chat, you know? Why me dummy first, if that makes sense. I'm gonna end this one here. Uh, Dan, no, this is not my finest video, but I wanted to put something out for you guys, kind of give you, my days have been a lot more calm, less hectic uh, since we came over here and I'm not really around all my friends. So, you know, things like what I'm doing today, cleaning my white walls, washing the bike, that's a very typical day for me. So, you know, I thought when I moved over here that my days were gonna be full of, at least while I wasn't working, my days were gonna be full of, you know, riding and, exploring the areas and it just hasn't been the case for a number of reasons but uh yeah tomorrow i'm gonna start another video tomorrow actually we're gonna we're probably gonna ride down south about 100 miles uh, our good friend bobber fett is entering his little iron head sports here into a little chopper show so so yeah thanks for coming along on this video um probably not the most entertaining i don't care i mean it's it's just a, a fireside chat. This is definitely one of those videos, like I mentioned before, there's videos for your current audience and videos for your incoming audience. It's definitely for the guys that have been around, guys and girls who have been around. So uh, yeah, I appreciate you, love you. Till next time, we'll see you later.